Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another Cumulus Cycles AWS hands-on tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to automate AWS infrastructure deployment using Terraform and GitHub Actions. If you're not familiar with using Terraform to provision infrastructure as code, I recommend watching my video on provisioning AWS infrastructure using Terraform, which I'll provide a link to in the description below. To get started with this tutorial, I've created a GitHub repository to work with and cloned it to my dev machine. I've also run AWS Configure and added my user's access key and secret access key. And now I'll jump over to the repo and add them as environment variables so GitHub Actions will have permissions to interact with AWS. So I'll click Settings, Secrets, then Actions, and add a new repository secret. I'll give it a name of AWS Access Key ID, and then paste in the access key and add secret, and add a new repository secret, this time for the secret access key, and add the secret. For this demo, I've granted my AWS user administrative privileges, but you should always follow the principle of least privilege when it comes to access outside of a training environment. And I'll be deleting these credentials after I create this video. Now I'll jump over to VS Code and start building out the infrastructure using Terraform. I'll create a new source folder to hold my template code, then create a main.tf file inside the source folder. Here I'll paste in the Terraform block, specifying the required version, and the AWS provider. And in the provider, I'll set the region to US East 1. Then I'll create a new folder named Modules, and inside of it, another folder named TF State. I'll create a main.tf file in the TF State folder, and paste in the Terraform block. Then I'll create a new file named tfstate.tf and add resources for the S3 bucket, which will hold the Terraform state file and the DynamoDB table for locking the Terraform config. Here we see that the bucket property for the AWS S3 bucket will be passed in via a variable. So inside the tfstate folder, I'll create another file named variables.tf. And in it, I'll create a variable for the bucket name, which will be type string, with a validation configuration, which will check to make sure that the bucket name isn't empty and follows S3 naming rules. Then I'll jump back over to the main TF file in the source folder and add a module for the TF state. The source points to the TF state folder in the modules folder and here I'm providing the name of the bucket for the bucket name variable. So I'll save this, jump back over to the terminal, change into the source folder, and issue a Terraform init to initialize the Terraform project. Then I'll issue a Terraform validate to validate my templates, and that looks good, so now I'll run a Terraform plan. And the plan indicates we have four resources to add. The DynamoDB table for the state locking, the S3 bucket, server-side encryption on the bucket, and bucket versioning. Now I'll issue a Terraform apply to provision the resources. Here I'll confirm yes. And with the four resources successfully added, I could jump over to the AWS console, and in S3, we see our buckets added. And switching over to DynamoDB, we see our Terraform state locking table. Now, currently, by default, Terraform is using a local backend. But I'd like to set the backend on S3, so I'll add the code for an S3 backend, specify the bucket, a key, a region, and the locking table and set encryption to true. Now I'll save the file, go back over to the terminal and issue Terraform init 
to set the new back end. I'll confirm with yes. And apply the changes. If that didn't seem familiar to you, I do recommend jumping over and watching my video on provisioning AWS infrastructure using Terraform. Now, with the Terraform project state initialized and the backend set to S3, I'll make an initial commit and push to the repo. Note that for demo purposes, I'm only using a main branch because I'll be triggering GitHub actions to run on push to the branch. But in a real scenario, you'll probably want to use branching and execute on merge to main for deployments. Now, I'll jump back into VS Code and write the templates for building out the VPC. I'll start by creating a new VPC folder in the modules folder and then add a main.tf file. I'll add the Terraform block, then add a vpc.tf file. Here, I've pasted in code for several resources, which I go into detail in my prior Terraform video. I've added an AWS VPC resource and an internet gateway, elastic IPs and NAT gateways with subnets for public one and public two. I also have private subnets and public and private route tables and route table associations. Because this template uses variables, I'll create a variables.tf file and add variables for the VPC CIDR, availability zones, public subnet CIDRs, and private subnet CIDRs. Because other templates in the infrastructure will use resources created in the VPC, I'll add an outputs.tf file and specify outputs for the VPC ID and the public and private subnets. Then I'll jump back over to the main TF file in the source folder and add a module for the VPC infra, which will point to the VPC folder in the modules folder. The variables being passed in to the VPC template will come from local variables. So I'll create a locals.tf file and paste in the variables and values. Now I'll jump back over to the terminal and issue a Terraform init to pick up the new module. I'll run a Terraform validate. Then a Terraform plan. And we see the plan is to add 18 resources. Now. Instead of running Terraform apply in the terminal, I'm going to implement GitHub Actions to trigger the deployment. For this demo, I'll just be using the default Terraform workspace, but you'll probably want to use multiple workspaces like dev, test, pre-prod for your multi-environment cloud resources. So to start with GitHub Actions, I'm going to jump over to VS Code, and in the root folder of my project's repo, I'm going to create a new folder named .github for my GitHub Actions. And inside the .github folder, I'll create a new folder named Workflows. And finally, inside of the Workflows folder, I'll create a new file named terraform.yaml. And it's within this file that the GitHub Actions code will live. So inside of the Terraform YAML file, I've added the code, which we'll walk through now. So what I'm listening for is on push, I want to execute the jobs on the main branch. And the jobs to execute will first be Terraform, which will run on Ubuntu. And then I'm setting the access key and secret access key using the GitHub secrets that I created in the repository. I'll set the default working directory to the source folder and then the steps to execute will start by checking out the repo, setting up Terraform, and then executing the Terraform commands. So first I'll run a Terraform format just to make sure that the commands are executing properly. 
then I'll run an init, then a terraform plan, and finally, if everything above passes, we'll run a terraform apply. Now, with the GitHub Actions file created and the changes that I made to add the VPC, I'll go ahead and push these changes to the GitHub repo. Then I'll jump over to GitHub and go into the Actions tab, and we see our workflow is in progress. and we have successful execution of our GitHub Actions. So let's jump over to the AWS console, head over to the VPC dashboard, and we see we have two VPCs. And here we see we have our CC VPC created. So that concludes this video on automating the deployment of AWS infrastructure using Terraform and GitHub Actions. If you found this informative, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to be notified when I release new content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.